our life the way we want, yet Sunday morning we come to worship God on Sunday. My challenge to you as the body of Christ, our worship of God on Sunday morning must not contradict the way we live our life on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. There must be a connection between our worship. We come to worship God and we go out and live out our discipleship. My brothers and my sisters, your word can direct your life. So Jesus, one day is speaking to the disciple and say, no good tree bears bad fruit. You don't find bad tree bearing good fruit. For we recognize a tree by his fruit. Jesus is speaking about a good person and say, out of their good treasurer, they speak. Because you see, it does not take long to know who a person is just wait until they open their mouth. And every person is what they speak because out of the abundance of our heart, we speak with our tongue. Can I get a witness? Whatever fills our heart, my brothers and my sisters, will come out. Will come out. Our treasurer, our heart, what is inside of us is being expressed through our mouth, our speech, my brothers and my sisters, how we speak, our word, display our attitude. James is warning the believers during his time and say, be careful because God is going to judge our words. But he's giving us a warning because we cannot control the tongue until we recognize that our tongue has the power to direct our lives. We must recognize that our tongue can bring destructive nature to our lives. It can destroy other person's life. It can destroy our own life. We must be aware that our tongue, my brothers and my sisters, can bring harm. We must recognize also our inability, not being able to control. Look, the illustration he's giving. He said the tongue is like that little fire that can set the whole, the whole bush on fire. It takes just one spark to start the fire. And the tongue, my brothers and my sisters, the tongue cannot be controlled. Human beings cannot control the tongue. But if we are able to control our tongue, the Bible refers to the tongue full of deadly poison. Can you imagine that the little tongue that we carry is a deadly poison that can bring poison to our lives. It can bring poison to our marriages. It can bring poison to our relationship. It can bring poison to the world. The tongue. James is warning us about the power of the tongue, that the word you speak from your mouth can direct your life. What a contradiction. With the same mouth, we bless God. But with the same mouth, we curse people who are created in the image of God. Jesus said in the Gospel of Matthew that you cannot even call your brother stupid. Because once you call somebody else stupid, you are insulting the one who made the person. You are insulting the maker. How many times we have called each other stupid? Come on, somebody. Poor politicians, we call them stupid all the time. You know, one day somebody was insulting the president. I say, why don't you run and become one too? If you feel he's doing a very bad job, you can run and become the next president and change everything. See, it's easy for you to sit in your corner there to insult the president, but you cannot become one. So you cannot even win the election to become the mayor. We don't have a mayor in harvest, isn't it? What happened to our city? You need to write so we can have a mayor. I can become the first mayor. You know, I'll have your vote, isn't it? <laughs> Jesus is saying when you call somebody stupid, 
You are insulting his maker. The power of our words. James said, be mindful. The tongue is a world of unrighteousness. With the same tongue, we bless God. With the same tongue, we curse people who are made in the image of God. It shouldn't be like this. The same mouth cannot bless and curse at the same time. Discipleship is also our ability to control our tongue. Controlling our tongue becomes very important in our lives. So bad tempers, my brothers and my sisters, is expressed in our speech. We display our attitude. You know what? One of the challenges this morning, as I want to emphasize this aspect, knowing that our words can direct our life, I want to challenge you this morning to give up your right to complain. Give up your right to complain. Hmm. We all complain about something. With our mouth, we do what? We complain. I want you to give up your right to complain in your marriage. I want you to give up your right to complain at work. I want you to give up your right to complain as a citizen of this country. By the way, the Bible says pray for the leaders of your nation. How can you pray for the president and insult him at the same time? Whoever is the president. Because we have a tendency when the, our candidate wins, then we pray. When our candidate lost, then we don't pray. No, the Bible says pray for the leaders. That's our responsibility as a church. How can you pray for somebody and then insult them at the end of the day? Does not make sense. We are to give up our right to complain. Controlling the tongue begins with us giving up our right to complain. Imagine in your marriage, if you are going to give up your right to complain, it means you are going to adopt a, a, a mindset of problem, for, of, 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 of solving problem, problem, problem. Uh, 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 you, you are focusing, your mindset it is not problem focus, but it's solution building. Wh whenever there is a problem in the marriage, instead of focusing on the problem and the blaming and the complaining, you turn your mind and uh, educate yourself to be solution builders. What's the solution out of this? That I'm going to give up my right to complain. I'll be part of the solution in my marriage. That I'll practice love. Oh, come on, somebody. Love covers a multitude of fault. Love is not just about when the person looks good and say, baby, I love you because she looks great. When she make up, she has a makeup and she looks great. That's not love. Love beyond the merit. Love beyond the merit. When you love somebody, love covers a multitude of fault. That I'm going to love this person at the lowest point of their life. I will lift them up. I will notice their mistakes, but my love for them will cover their mistakes. That's love at its best. It happens when you give your right to complain. And the moment you give your right to complain, you are controlling your tongue. Can you imagine? Because it helps you to adopt a mindset of solution builders instead of being problem focused. So I'm challenging you. Part of controlling your time is to give up your right to complain. When you give up your right to complain, you begin to cultivate gratitude. You begin to cultivate gratitude. Can you imagine how our life will be blessed if we live our life from the perspective of gratitude? I'm thankful that this morning I'm alive. I'm thankful for my family. I'm thankful for my husband. I'm thankful for the job that we have. We may not have enough, but I'm thankful that I'm able to put food on my table. Can you imagine if you did not have the job that you have? You know, just spend one hour or 30 minutes in the shoes of somebody 
with no car, or with no job, you, you, you'll stop complaining. You know when it was about 95, 98 degrees out there, and you get out of your house, there is air conditioning in your house. Jump into your car, the first thing is you want your air conditioning to work. And you know, you have air conditioning there in your car, and you are going to work, and there is air condition at your workplace. You have all the right to be singing, I raise up, hallelujah. You are okay. Have you ever thought about the homeless guy who stands on the street and is too hot outside there? Have you ever thought about that? When you give up your right to complain, you begin to cultivate gratitude. You focus on the positive aspect of your life. Oh, yes. I've learned to practice gratitude in my life. This is how I've overcome my grief. You know, I've lost my mom when I was planning everything. You know, you know I, I was mad. I prayed for a long time for my mom to come. She looked after my father. For 10 years, my father was sick. And then when my father passed away, I said, okay, this is an opportunity to bring my mom so that she can have at least a good time. I had dreams, and my wife used to laugh at me because I was dreaming about buying, uh, you know, that big time Buick, you know, the road, uh, road master, you know, or a big time Lincoln signature. So I said to my mom, I will teach you how to drive. So we'll be driving around and traveling around. You know, one time I used to live in the parsonage and I was tired of living in the parsonage. I went to start working a second job uh, so that we can have enough money to buy a big house with an extra bedroom for her to stay. God blessed us. We managed to get a place. So there was everything organized for my mom to come. The week a document was available, a green card was approved on Monday. And then I received those documents. I'm waiting and I'm going to surprise them to go. My plan was to go Friday in South Africa, pick my mom, and by Monday we come back together. And on Thursday, they told me my mom has passed away. I said, Lord, why? The grudge is inside of me. Why? 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 I felt bad. And every time I'm at the restaurant, I see somebody bringing their mother with them. You know, some of you have your mom here, your parents, you go to the restaurant together. You know, my children, they've never seen my mom, they've never seen my father. And then I see some of you, you have your father, your mom. You got to tell them that you love them now. Cooperate with your parents. Don't bring grief to your parents. Cooperate with them. It's a blessing to have your parents. Oh, guys, every time I go to the restaurant, I see somebody with their mom. Then I say, God, why did you take this opportunity away from me? And then I was grieving and became mad and furious inside of me until the Lord began to teach me how to cultivate gratitude. Focusing on the positive aspect of life, I began to focus now on these great moments, memories so powerful, those positive aspects, the contribution that my mom made into my life. She was the first person to teach me how to write my name. She was a tough teacher, by the way. Because when you miss, you know, she had a small, uh, 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 how do you call it? Uh, yes, yes, and then, you know, you'll get some over there. Uh, yeah. so, so I begin to reflect on those great moments of my life when I learned how to write, I learned how to talk, the confidence that I had. Uh, there are a lot of good memories, you know. I, I remember my mom as the person who sacrificed for us. My father had a challenging life. But my mother was there for us. There was many times, many occasions, my mom could have walked away from us because of my father's behavior. But she stayed, she stayed because of us, because she wanted to see, make sure that we had something to eat. We had something to put on our clothes. She sacrificed for us. So I began to focus on those positive aspects and the, 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 the positive things that we have experienced together as a family. And the more I did that, the more I shift, I'm thankful. I am thankful for the life. I say, dear God, I thank you for the life of my mother and the contribution she brought to my life. And by the way, I was blessed. My name is the name of my 
father's mother, and she used to call me father. She would call me father because I carry the name. I was named after a father. So, so it may be different for you, but I'm just sharing my testimony that when we give up our right to complain, we begin to cultivate gratitude in whatever we are going through in life. We can focus and be thankful for something positive that God has done in our lives. Now, sometimes you can wake up in the morning and say, I have nothing to be thankful to. Are you serious? Really? That you have nothing to be thankful for? So if you just pause for a while and begin to look at your life, yourself, and, and, and the blessings of God in your life, I, I, I'm sure you will agree with me. That, that if you learn to give up your right to complain, mind you, I say it's your right. Uh, but, but if you give it up and say I'm going uh, to, to adopt a mindset of solution building, I will not focus on the problem, I'll focus on the solution. You come to church, you have a mindset of solution building, when something is not done, you do it. You don't blame anybody else for not doing it. All right? You know, you don't say, they did not do this. Oh, they did not do it. I, I, someone came to me and said, I'm going to leave the church because they are not doing it. I said, would you create your own perfect church somewhere there? This is an hospital. It's not a museum of perfect people. We encourage one another. We carry each, one of, each, each other's load. We, we, we encourage one another. That's where we are. That's who we are as a church. You, you meet me at the point of my shortcomings. You pray for me. You encourage me. So when you give up your right to complain, you begin to have that mindset of solution building. You begin to cultivate uh, gratitude. You live your life from the perspective of gratitude. Oh, yes. Oh, I thank God. I've learned to be happy with what I have. And to celebrate the blessings in my life. You know, you, you can, you, you see, we always talk about this uh, 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 wisdom of looking at the half glass as half full or as, as half empty. All this, you know, is just an attempt to teach us to cultivate gratitude, to focus on what is positive, you know. If I have $10 in my pocket, I'm thankful for the $10 and what I can achieve with $10. I don't have m my life. My blood pressure shoot up because I want to have 500 and I cannot afford, I cannot have it. Then you are miserable. But, but if you live your life from the perspective of gratitude, when you cultivate gratitude, oh, you will experience what Jesus has said, I've come so that you may have abundant life. You will experience that. Just try to give up your right to complain. Because your words can direct your life. With your word, you can choose the direction of your life. You know, this is why David says, this is the day that the Lord has made. I'm going to rejoice. It does not mean I'm not going to have challenges. It does not mean I'm, go I'm not going to experience disappointment. But I choose to rejoice. In the midst of my disappointment, I choose to rejoice. I will not give up my joy for the things of the world. I will not give up my joy because something is wrong. I may have back problem, but I'll thank God if I'm able to stand and make two steps forward. I'll be thankful to God. One sister one day was giving me a testimony when she was sick that she lost the test of food. Can you imagine? You have all the food that you have but nothing tastes good in your mouth. What a miserable life. Oh, come on, guys. You know, time to time when I'm driving, I'm hungry. You know, I see Beggar King. Oh, I say, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> Today I'm going to indulge for a Beggar King. You know, you see that Beggar King. The test, you, you, you're happy. Yeah, you enjoy the food because of what? The blessings of test. Can you imagine you have no test? Ah, come on, guys. The nice coffee we had would not make sense. Come on, somebody. Just try. Give up your right to complain. Cultivate 
gratitude. Focus on the positive aspect of your life. It will make a difference. It will energize you. David said, this is the day that the Lord has made. I'm going to rejoice. I'm going to be glad. It is a statement of faith. It is a direction. We are throwing ourselves into the direction of that day. That I'm going to embrace happiness. I'm going to embrace joy. Whatever my boss is going to say, whatever my colleagues are going to say will not affect me. So you prepare yourself. Oh, come on, somebody. You know, when, when, when you are prepared like that, you, you even go to work with that sense of gratitude, you're not, you not going to be easily angered by what someone else say. Because I will not allow anybody to program my attitude. You know, don't, don't, don't be like a machine when they press on, and then they press off. No, you, can, you cannot be like that. You control your emotion. You are at peace with yourself. You have the confidence. God in heaven knows your name. You are blessed by the Lord. And wherever you are, God is with you. I step at my work. I bless my work environment. I say, God, I give you praise for this great day that I'm going to pass today. It does not mean someone is not going to come and step on your toes. There will be people who come and they will do some stuff to you. But you control yourself. You don't control what other people do. But you control yourself. You control yourself. Controlling the town. So we are going to practice this week as we meditate on James, the book of James, chapter 3. The reminder that the town is a world of unrighteousness. Why? Because with the town, we commit the sin of gossiping, the sin of slander, the sin of lying. You know, we Christians are very selective in our sins. Just because we don't commit adultery, just because we don't gamble, just because we don't murder, just because we don't steal, does not mean we are perfect and good. My brothers and my sisters, let's be aware and beware of the sins of the town. So next uh, Sunday we'll continue this series on controlling the town. But for today, may we pray that God will give us the grace to give up our right to complain. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, let all of God's people say amen. amen. All right, so uh, give up your right to complain. And uh, don't focus on the problems, but instead be a solution builder. That's going to be real tough, Pastor. I, uh, I don't think I can do that on my own. Do you, do you guys think we can do that on our own? So uh, I think we're going to need a little help. What do you guys think? So if you would, please stand and lift your voices in worship with us as we cry out to the Lord that we can't do it on our own, that we're going to have to have help. Thank you. 
Temptation comes my way. 